we have been looking at depreciation and we looked at the straight line method depreciation in which we saw that that is um, a type of depreciation where I lose the same amount every year and that caused the straight line if I drew it on a graph. The reducing balance method is a more practical method and the way in which the accounting um, would acknowledge that an object depreciates in value. And it also makes sense if we think about it. If I own a car worth a hundred thousand rand and I lose ten percent of the value on that car in my sec in my first year, in the next year that car would be worth ninety thousand rand. If I continue to lose ten thousand every year, in ten thousand in ten years that car would be worth nothing. Now my car that I drive is 22 years old, that means I, I should be owing someone money to take my car. Okay? And that's not the case. Okay? Why not? Because the value of a car actually depreciates um, relative to the value of the car. In other words, in the next year you'll only lose 10% again on 90,000. In other words, now it's worth 81,000. Instead of losing, first I lost 10,000 in value, in the next year I'm now only losing 9,000 in value. In the third year, now I'm losing 10%, so I'm losing 8,100. Which means I've got 73,000, is it? Uh, 8,000 will bring 73, so 72,900 okay. while on the <coughs> sorry, on the reducing point on the straight um, line method my car would already only be worth 70,000 so why is the name appropriate? well, the reducing balance method means that the balance I am using to calculate my depreciation with is reducing. Now when we put this on a graph, we would see that at time zero, my car would be worth a certain value. And that would be the principal value. As time goes by, my car depreciates in value of course. But, fortunately, it loses less and less each time it depreciates. So that the graph ends up making an exponential graph. And it is, can also be seen very nicely in the formula. Here's the formula. 1 minus i to the power of n. And in here we can see n is in the exponent, and that is why it makes an exponential graph. Okay. Why is it not making an exponential graph in that direction? Well, because the base that we're working with would be 1 minus a value less than 1, so this answer will be less than 1. Since my base is less than 1, it means that it's actually a fraction. And therefore, less than 1, and from a theory of graphs, we know that this thing should have a downward slope. Downward slope. Now that we have this formula, let's go look at a few examples that might show how we can uh, use this formula to uh, be useful. James bought a car for 120,000 rand. And they have to resell it in three years uh, to buy a newer model. He learns that his vehicle will depreciate at 24% per annum on the reducing balance method. How much can he expect to sell his car for in three years' time? So we learn it's the reducing balance method. 
which means we use our formula 1 minus i to the power of n. We use the formula to get the variables that we want. We don't know the future value of it. The principal value we know is 120,000. The depreciation rate is 24%, which means divide by 100, which gives us 0 0.24. And the time period, or the number of times it is going to be reduced, is 3 times. We can substitute this immediately into our formula. We need not solve anything, and we get 120,000. 1 minus 0 0.24 to the power of 3. And that, using our calculator, we can solve this one. 120, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by, and in brackets, we have 1 minus 0, uh, 0.24, close the brackets, to the exponent of 3. And we get 52,000, 677 and 12 cents. 52,677 rand and 12 cents. I'm sure James would be very disappointed to learn that in only three years his car lost more than half of its value. And therefore, people say cars are not investments. And it is worth repeating, cars are not investments. It loses too much value over time. And if you buy it on credit, you lose even more because you end up 120,000 Rand. You'll probably pay 200,000 Rand if you pay it off in three years' time. So you didn't just lose half of the value, you actually lost three quarters of the amount you paid. Okay, let's look at one more example. Tendai has just purchased a second-hand bus for his business. He was told that it was worth 500,000 when new. The bus is now two years old and he bought it for 370,000 rand. If the depreciation is calculated on the reducing balance method, what is the annual depreciation rate on the bus? Let's uh, just put this information. It's probably just the story is going to confuse us. So let's try to get out of a foreign context into what we know about money or numbers. 500,000 was the original price, apparently, when it was new, when it was zero years old. After two years, it was sold for 370,000. The question is, what is the annual depreciation rate? So using our formula, and they told us it, we should calculate it for uh, the reducing balance method, we find that our future value is 370,000. Our present, sorry, principal value is 500,000. Our Rate is what we are looking for, and our number of times in which it is depreciated is 2. It was depreciated over 2 years, so it's 2 times. Now this all added, or putting this into our formula, gives us that we get 370,000. If 50,000 depreciates at a certain rate over 2 years. Now to solve this, divide both sides with 50,000. Trying to get I on his own. Then we need to take the square root on both sides since we are getting rid of the square and that leaves us with 1 minus I is equal to, and here I don't yet use my calculator to get an answer. I'll do everything at the same time when I'm on my calculator. <coughs> 50,000 
And at this point, I just see, oh, there's a plus one on this side, so let's subtract a one on both sides. Subtract a one, so I'm left with negative i is equal to the square root of 37 over 50. I just want to simplify that, but um, minus one. And since there's a negative, if I divide both sides with a negative 1, the whole of the other side, negative 1, it's going to change the sign, so I can just swap around the terms since there's a negative in between them. It looks like they swap around, actually. And so the 1 becomes a positive 1, which I have to write, and the positive in front of the square root becomes a negative, sorry, a negative square root of 37 over 50. There we go. Let's try to save you some time. And we get, using our calculator, 1 minus, in brackets, we have 37 over 50. That half, the square root of that. And we get 0, 8, 6. is equal, and there's our answer, 0, 0,139777. So multiplying that with 100 gives me 13,98, 98%. That is my depreciation rate.